Hey everybody, welcome back to Oval Window Racing. And look what I got done. <laughs> Finally got the five speed back together. And as promised, I'm gonna show you the intermediate um, bar mounting bracket and the uh, caper bar. So we'll start with the intermediate, Berg intermediate mount. And that's this guy right down here. And as you can see, hopefully, it utilizes one, two, three, four of the bolts on the uh, case here, the transmission case. And uh, I will point out that you have to install longer bolts or studs on the lower part. And the neat thing about it is if you have a spare old transmission case, um, you can use the four top bolts up here because they are long enough. You can see they tend to be longer. And then um, earlier in the video before I showed you the frame horn mounts. That's where these mount and then this part mounts onto the, uh, the nose cone mount. And you can see the nose cone on the Berg is actually bigger. Like I explained before, there's a gear in here. And uh, so there's no, no mount on there. There's actually really no room for it. I'll move on back to here to the uh, rear mount. It is solid mount. There's no uh, rubber or urethane bushings in there. This is uh, one of the early Berg mounts and it had a, a strap that went over the top, but I don't use the strap for some reason when I first, back in the younger days, um, the top of the transmission case really didn't allow room for that strap, but I took care of that and I'll sh show you that here in a little bit. And I added these. That is where the Kafer bar mounts. And I'll show you that a little later. I originally had it come out this way, but the header I was running at the time got in the way, so I had to cut it all off and remount it over there. And uh, why I painted it yellow, I don't know. Hi, Emily. Hello. <laughs> We're at the back of the car. Yes, I know it's a mess. I should have probably cleaned it before we start putting things in here. <laughs> that won't ever happen. But this Kafer bar, Kafer bar, Ren Kafer bar is a, they call it. Um, I, this is my custom build. I actually use it. it. Probably should have been a little bit bigger round, but it still does seem to do the trick. It is chromoly. Get some light in there so you can see. And yep, it's easy to see because I painted it yellow. Must have been the only paint I had back in the day because I built this thing a long time ago. And uh, basically. These go to the uh, rear mount, down to the, the, the little brackets I showed you on the transmission. And uh, mine was easy to build, I showed you before. It goes from shock tower bolt to shock tower bolt. And these early pans, the bolts point at one another. And then the, uh, we're having a little trouble probably with Hubert when we go to build his, um, because they like point from to tail light to tail light. And there's the front mount. And I could point it out earlier before. That's where the uh, intermediate mount will bolt. Like I said, uh, I had trouble in the early days with the transmission uh, hitting up here. And I don't know if it was something I did with wheel hop back in the early days when I thought I was a drag racer, or if it's just maybe the body was sagging a little bit. But uh, some people recommend when the, these run Kafer bars came on the market to preload them by pulling everything up. Well, since I was pushing up and already kind of high, I preload by pushing the frame horns down and actually gained a little bit of a space in there. But basically what I built here was uh, my own custom, like a turnbuckle. There's a, one of these is a right hand and the other one's a left hand thread. But nowadays uh, you can get those turnbuckles or the what they call them heim joints um, they're pretty available now so the next one I'll probably use heim joints and uh, that's kind of what most of the Ren Kafer bars are built with are built with the heim joints and uh, I think Empy still sells one I think the one they sell is probably the uh, one that bug pack was carrying back in the day and uh, I still believe it's still available, but I will put a word out to my friend, uh, Prescott Phillips, and I'll try to remember to link something down below. He actually builds them. Once in a while, I have them in stock, but yeah, he's just give him a shout and see if he's got any. 
Um, I think he sells them probably about the same price that Empy sells them for. I haven't priced them in a long time, so I don't know. Like I said, I'll probably be building the one for Hubert. Or maybe Emily will build the one for Hubert. <laughs> <laughs> so what our job today is to get the transmission back in the car. And once everything's all hooked up, I'll give you a little walk around again so you can see everything all mounted. I'll try. Try not to get all dirty. All right, yeah, another brisk Saturday morning. But uh, we made some progress. Got the transaxle, the Gene Berg 5-speed installed all the way from brake drum to brake drum. <laughs> I got to give special thanks to my, uh, my buddy Mike and uh, my daughter Emily to help me out. You know, back in the younger days, I could do this all by myself, but man, it's a little tasky now. I mean, it's not all that difficult, but it's a lot of up and down, up and down, up and down. And the old knees just, just don't handle it as like they used to. But uh, be a little closer look in here, get some light, show you what the old traction bar and the intermediate mount look like when they're all installed. Yeah, the rear mount there, like I said, the uh, the old turn buckle goes down the rear mount and uh, up to the uh, crossbar which runs from shock tower to shock tower. And if I haven't explained it before, but the whole purpose of that is to keep the uh, frame horns from doing this. It's kind of what contributes to some wheel hop and uh, loss of traction. You want know, all this to be nice and solid. And uh, I pointed out earlier, the old uh, transmission used to touch up there, the bell housing part of it, but got plenty of space now. And like I said, I like to preload kind of in a downward pattern and then if we can see up in there you can see now the old shiny bolts that one on each side that's where the uh roll bar roll cage comes down and uh i con contacted emailed uh ron loomis i know he makes the uh amount to continue from uh the uh, roll cage down to the uh frame horn somehow i emailed him and uh tried to get a price on him see if he had uh, any available but I don't know, the email got lost somewhere in the old interweb, so <laughs> I don't know what happened there. If he just overlooked it or didn't see it or forgot to respond, and you guys out there know Ron Loomis, hey, give him a shout out. Tell him to email me back. If not, uh, I don't know, I haven't seen the need yet, but uh, I may try to come up with something on my own. You know how I like to do that. <laughs> well, let's move on to the intermediate housing. All right, let's get under the car. Now we're down under the car, blinding you with the light. Always use your jack stands. But yeah, there's the uh, mount, the ground strap. Runs over to the transmission there. All hooked up in there. And hooked up to the front mount. And that just, like I said, helps stabilize the front of the uh, transmission. Keep that nose cone good and sturdy and steady. And maybe someday I'll invest in a new starter. But yeah, it's hard part is done. I ran some new brake lines at the end here. Probably should think about replacing the rubber hose someday. All right, yeah, we're making progress. <laughs> Next step is going to be to assemble the engine and shove her back in there. Finish hooking up all the hoses and stuff. But uh, before we can move on any further, I'll wait for the kid to wake up so we can uh, pump some brakes and uh, bleed them since I took uh, brake drums and hoses and wheel cylinders all off uh, drain some fluid out of there I gotta finish bleeding the brakes and gotta remember to fill the old uh, transmission up with some gear lube <laughs> I still gotta buy some more gear lube but I don't think a quart and a half is gonna take it if I remember correctly I think it's something like uh, three quarts and uh, I don't maybe I'll make a quick video out there I'm sure there's a uh, several videos out there on how to uh, fill your transmission up, but I'll show you how I like to do it. And uh, give a shout out to old uh, Amelia Hartford for reminding me to do that. <laughs> if you guys don't know who Amelia Hartford is, uh, she's a young lady that loves to wrench on cars. That's kind of how she deals with everyday life. And she's not just wrenching on one car, she's got like four cars. One of her cars, I think she still, as of uh, her last video, is holding the world's record for the fastest C8 Corvette. Uh, it's twin turbocharged, and I think she's even got it wired for nitrous. So yeah, I'll try to remember to link her uh, channel down below if you don't know who she is. Uh, 
definitely go check her out. And uh, I think I'll just sign off here with her favorite saying. So mine is keep shifting those gears and uh, hers is E-Crew, we're out of here. Take care. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching.